In the 1930s, Skill released the first Skill saw, the one that we kind of know today as the saw that built America. It was the Model 77, and that created an entire shift in the way that people were able to do work. Beforehand, things were just done with hand tools, and now the average worker could have a circular saw that was powered by electricity, making their productivity go off the charts. Just 70 years earlier, a young man from New Jersey was arrested in Virginia and was sentenced to work on the railroad. At that time, there was a railroad machine that had just come onto the market. American folklore has changed the story to say that John Henry's livelihood was attached to being able to beat this machine and being more productive than it, when in reality he was court-ordered to be there in the first place. Now this machine went on to be able to create longer, faster, cheaper railroads that we know and use today. This is something that I completely created myself. It's something that I designed in the computer painstakingly and then created here in my wood shop. And I think a lot of what makes this special is because how it's made, not the actual machine that's making it, but because I fully own the process. Now, if I were to start selling those files and this was a dime a dozen out on the street, I don't think that it would be nearly as special. It certainly wouldn't fetch the price that I ask for it these days. And that's because it is something that I am bringing into the world, not something that that machine is bringing into the world. And I think that's where a whole lot of people get crossed up on the idea. A brand new tool is brought into the process and there is this feeling of I am being left behind, whereas that machine is moving forward. Just in 2009, the very first lithium-ion circular saw was put into patent by Milwaukee Tools. And that changed up the game again. You no longer have to take extension cords to be able to run your circular saw. You now can take that wherever you want. I, like many others, saw that and thought, that's going to be trash. It's not going to have the power or the torque to be able to work and do what it needs to do. And the first time I used one, I was proven wrong. It gave the tradesmen, the craftsmen, whatever you want to call them, the ability to do their work in a more efficient and easier way. Now, we live in a day and age where information is shared more readily than ever before. Therefore, things are moving along faster than they ever have before. To me, it's very prevalent when you look at CNC machining in particular, because that's what I do here in the shop. Right now, I'm having to painstakingly create something that spits this out. In just five to 10 years, that will not be the case. It'll be just like ChatGTP is right now. You'll be able to go in and through text-based format, be able to tell the system what you want it to create and it will be able to give you a G-code file that your machine is able to cut out. That is going to translate to in 20 or 30 years, the average homeowner being able to say, I would like this specific type of artwork on my wall at this dimension out of this material and it be delivered to their house in just a few weeks without ever talking to a craftsman or a tradesman. Is CNC machining killing woodworking? I specifically do not think so. And that is because there's always going to be people out in this world who are tinkering, who are innovating, who are creating. In the exact same way that there's always people out in the world who are creating dining tables. People can certainly go to Ikea, or if they want to spend more money, go to Restoration Hardware. But why do they seek out these people who are in their garage who are creating things? They want to be able to tell their guests when they come over the story of the craftsman, the understanding behind the object. Because the majority of the time, the object that woodworkers are actually creating really isn't the main drive to be able to purchase that thing. Whether it's $100,000 kitchen cabinets or it's a $50 cutting board, People love to be able to say, I was able to support somebody locally, or I know the person who made this with their own two hands. I don't think that that's ever going away. When I tell people that this is handmade and other people say, no, a machine made that, I really have hesitancy towards that because this is something that before me did not exist. And I fully believe that. You look at other people in the maker space, uh, Greg Klassen, for example, the very first person to make river tables what they are today. You know, you've probably seen them online. It has the glass in the very middle, no epoxy whatsoever. He created those and he spent a very long time getting that off the ground. When it did, it sparked an entire new set of makers in the world who are able to emulate what he had first created. As a maker, I've seen him on Instagram, obviously I don't know the guy, but I've seen him change the way that he is able to put forward his river objects. He's made a lot of wall art. I see that he's recently done some kitchen cabinets, and I'm sure that he has some very high-end clientele who want the person who made the very first one. Now, as woodworkers, I think that we're faced with a dilemma. Is it something that we're wanting to pursue to be able to dive into future technology and understand it so that we're not left behind, 
or is it honing your craft where you are, what you feel most comfortable with? I know specifically that I could use these machines for the rest of my life and hopefully my mind will be able to create things that keep it fresh and keep it moving forward. Human beings often see change as something that's frightening and I think that you should only be frightened if you don't have a foundation, that you as an individual don't know where you stand. And it's not about knowing every single possibility, it's about understanding I know what I'm able to do. What are these things that are changing around me and how are they affecting me in positive and negative ways? The American dream is built off of this ideology that if you work hard and keep your head down and get real sweaty during the day that things will work out. If you understand where your strengths lie and you lean into those, I think that's where things actually work out. Whether you're a completely traditional woodworker and only use a mallet and chisel, or if you're somebody who does the modern day woodworking where you know all these saws and everything are built off of what happened in the 1930s that scared the world of oh no we now have power tools i might be obsolete or if you're somebody like me who's fully leaning in to the digital age of woodworking and the fact that it is remarkably accessible for an individual like me to have a machine like that in my shop here at home i think the makers who are most at peace are the ones who understand that these tools they're just tools. Yes, nicer tools will produce better results, but at the end of the day, the person who is using that tool is the person who is really creating the object. That person is setting the public's perception on what is possible with these tools. Whether you're Greg Klassen and decided to be able to cut glass in a weird way and make it look like a river, or you're John Henry and you're somebody who's working tremendously hard to be able to prove that hard work really does pay off. I definitely think that there's a beauty to understanding the past, especially in the makerspace. If you don't understand what you're standing on and who built that foundation, it's very easy to get swept off your feet with the newest and the latest and the greatest. You'll never really have a foundation and without a foundation it's incredibly difficult to hold the things that you hope to carry on in your life. In September I'm going to have a series on my YouTube channel called Make Timber and I'm going to be going over a lot of topics just like this. I'm going to be bringing up objects that sell and how I make them and what I sell them for as well as just a bunch of behind the scenes of this is how I get to that place. I get reached out to a lot about people who are wanting to understand how to make better products and even apprenticeships and that like. So after getting quite overwhelmed with all of the people reaching out and really wanting to help people in the most specific way possible, I am about to launch my course. Hopefully uh, it'll be ready for Make Timber. Believe me, the course is not like, uh, you can make six figures and I can too, and I'll make six figures off of you. I oftentimes tell people that they should not go full time into making things to sell because it is the quickest way to kill a hobby. But for the people like me out in the world who do want to be able to sell the things that they make, and they know that, and they want to be able to cut out the 10 years of time that I wasted getting to this point, uh, I hope that it will be helpful. I'll have details in the description below where you can go and sign up for my email list so you'll be among the first to be notified when it actually does launch. January 2024, I'll be releasing a video that will be a deep dive on the profits generated off of this channel. So that's what you're seeing right now, the amount of time that I spent to create this video in particular. Because at the very end of the year, I'm going to add up all of these videos so that I can understand my hourly rate for this YouTube channel. Honestly, I really don't know where it's going to end up. A massive thanks to all my patrons. Thank you so much for your continued support. I have a very small surprise in store for y'all for Make Timber, so I'm excited about that, and I really just can't thank you enough. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. I know it was a little bit more introspective than normal, but I get a lot of comments on the channel saying that what I'm doing is not real woodworking, or has no soul, or I'm just creating crap. And unfortunately, I think that is for people who've taken no time to inform themselves of where we've come from, or think about where we're going. I hope that this was helpful to somebody out there in the world. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks. Goodbye.